Welcome to Lawrence United Methodist Church. We hope you enjoy the service. Hey, good morning. Uh, I am so excited to be here with you today. And when I came in for worship this morning, uh, there was a poster that greeted me here. And uh, it was just a, a poster encouraging me and, and, and thanking me, as well as posters for the rest of our media team, uh, the worship team, and many others. And as much as we appreciate uh, the posters and the thanks that, that we're getting, I want to thank you as well, too, because we're in this together. This is our worship that we do together. And just as we've got a job to do up here, you've got a job to do as well. And part of your job is to interact with us in worship. Um, those of you who are on Facebook with us, Facebook only uh, will give this information out to about 10% of the friends that you have. But the way that we increase that number is uh, by clicking the share button and clicking the like button. And if you haven't liked Lawrence United Methodist Church's page, please take the time to do that. Another way that you increase our ability to share God's love with other people is by writing in the comment section. So maybe during this worship service, uh, just take the time to, to, to write out an amen or, or write a prayer request. And I'm going to give you a specific job to write something during the sermon. Well, truly, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning and thank you for joining us at Lawrence United Methodist Church online. If you would, please join me and we'll sing... What a friend we have in Jesus.
as we continue in our time of worship, let's join together in our mission statement. Even though we find ourselves separated during this season, we are still united in our love, our faith, and in the mission that God has given us as a church family. Lawrence United Methodist Church exists to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world by leading people to a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, inviting people to Christian fellowship, guiding people to become more like Jesus, helping people discover and share their God-given gifts, and taking the light of God to people in our community and the world. Amen. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Well, good morning, little people, and good morning, big people. Have you ever been on time out? Have you ever gotten in trouble and done something you weren't supposed to do? And so you couldn't go outside to play with your friends. You couldn't do some of the things that you like to do. And it really just made you kind of bummed. Well, imagine being on time out and you didn't even do nothing. Wouldn't that be unfair? You wouldn't feel so good about that. But right now we're kind of going through a time out, right? We're all kind of in the house and we can't play with our friends like we want to and can't go to the movies, can't go to church, can't go to school. And uh, it could feel really, really sad. But instead of moping around and feeling all bad because we are in this period of time out, we can actually use that time wisely. Our scripture lesson today talks about a guy named Paul who was locked away and he was kind of in time out too. And what he did is instead of moping and saying, oh, this is so unfair, he decided that he was going to encourage the people who were locked away with him. He even encouraged the people who locked him away and made them feel better. And not only did he make them feel better, but by encouraging other people, he made himself feel better. I think that we can do the same thing. And a lot of you have already been doing that. A lot of you kids, I've gotten so many messages from you guys just saying how much you miss coming to church and how you appreciate having your Sunday school teachers. And we really like when we receive those messages. Maybe there are other people in your life that you appreciate, like your parents, your grandparents, people who take care of you. So instead of spending time moping in this, in this period of time out, instead of saying how unfair it is, and it does feel a little unfair, we can figure out ways to encourage others and show them that we love them and appreciate them. And when we do that, we not only make others feel better, but we can make ourselves feel better too. I hope that you can find ways to do that this week. Good morning and thank you for again visiting us online, Lawrence United Methodist Church. It's great to be with you this morning. You know, over the past many weeks, there have been a lot of changes and we keep evolving along with it. We found a way now to create worship every week. We found a way to meet in Bible study on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We are working on ways for the Sunday schools to meet. Ministry continues here at Lawrence United Methodist Church and people continue to support it. People continue to increase their giving. More people are giving online. People are stopping by the office to drop off their envelopes. They're mailing them in. The congregation's in touch and we're strong. If you're interested in giving electronically, there are a couple of ways to do that. One is to use the Push Pay app, which is shown on the screen. Another way is to go to the church website at www.lawrenceumc.com Click the Give button, and it'll take you to that Push Pay location so you can give that way. You know, I saw a, a joke this week on Facebook, and it was the devil talking to God. And the devil said, I've shut down all your churches. And God said, no, you haven't. They're just meeting in all kinds of different locations now. And that's exactly what's happening here at Lawrence United Methodist Church. I'd remind you once again that because you give, Lawrence United Methodist Church is able to give.
It gives me great pleasure to introduce Denise Barton as a new member. Denise has been with us for quite some time. I've watched her bring her granddaughter. Denise enjoys road trips, reading, and watching movies. So do I, Denise. She loves working with missions, and she just enjoys serving others. It is such a great pleasure to have Denise join the Lawrence United Methodist Church. Denise, I have some questions for you this morning. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and put your whole trust in His grace and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? As a member of Lawrence United Methodist Church, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service? If so, please answer, I will. I will. Members of the Household of God and our Lawrence United Methodist Church family, I commend Denise to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase her faith, confirm her hope, and perfect her in love. Will you please join us in the congregational response? We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Denise, may the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. Congratulations, Denise. We Amen. love you. As we continue worshiping, we move to our time of prayer. Through prayer, we connect with God. And beginning today, we also have a new opportunity to connect with each other through our spiritual growth classes. After this worship video, we'll have four different classes meeting through Zoom. You can find login information on Facebook or YouTube in the comments. We hope you'll join us. As we begin praying, I will start with a short prayer and conclude with, Lord, hear my prayer. I invite you, the congregation, to respond with, Lord, hear our prayer. Then we will have a time in our own homes to pray the prayers of our hearts to a loving God who hears each and every one of us. After a time, I will lead us in closing with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Father God, I want to thank you that you are a kind, merciful, and loving God that you have promised to never forsake us or leave us. And I thank you that you are with us through the fear and sorrows and pain that we are experiencing in this pandemic. And we thank you that you are our hope, that through Jesus, we have hope. In his name we pray, amen. Lord, hear my prayer. Let us close our time in prayer, praying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
This morning's scripture comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians, the first chapter, beginning with the first verse. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayer with joy, thankful for your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Mighty God, we pray that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts will be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, our strength, our rock, and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray and let us all say, amen. Uh, there were two young people uh, that were going around the neighborhood, knocking door to door, inviting people to go to church with them. And they had a lot of great success, but when they got to this one house, it was obviously that the person didn't want to hear anything about it. The lady answered the door and she said, I don't want to go to your church. And she said, don't ever come back here again. And she went to slam the door. Well, instead of slamming the door shut though, the door sprung right back at her. So surprised, she grabs the door again. She slams it again. And one more time again, the, the door springs right back at her. Well, during our time of social distancing here, uh, we've gotten kind of used to a few closed doors. Our school doors are closed. A lot of our work doors are closed and our neighbors' doors are closed. Well, this Sunday, I want to begin a new sermon series called House Arrest. That's what a lot of us are under, house arrest. And that's what the Apostle Paul was when he was in Rome. He was under house arrest. His movement was restricted. House arrest. He, he had fewer choices. House arrest. Uh, uh, not everyone could come and see him. And yet, I want to say this, is that the Apostle Paul, while under house arrest, uh, not only did he just uh, survive, he thrived. And I believe that the Apostle Paul had a, a message for the church. That's for the church at Philippi back then, and that's for us today, you and I, the church and here's the message that I believe that Paul has for us. Your circumstances should not be the source which determines your joy. Can you say that with me? Your circumstance should not be the source which determines your joy. And instead, the source that determines your joy is your relationship with Jesus Christ, right? And, and as long as you've got that relationship with Jesus Christ, you can live at the penthouse or you can live in the outhouse, but you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So today what I want to do is I just want to remind you of a few things that we can be working on during our time of house arrest. I only got two points. The first point that I want to make is this. Remember the good. Would you say that with me? Remember the good. Many of us are shut behind closed doors with our families and we're in tight quarters. And, and, and on the one hand, being in uh, tight corners behind closed doors with your family can bring out the best. The opposite is that sometimes it can bring out the, the worst. And today we've got tempers that are rising angry voices that are rising, and domestic violence that is rising. People are getting frustrated and forgetting the good. But let me share with you what Paul says to the church in Philippi. It says this in Philippians 1.3, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you. Paul hasn't forgotten what he loves about the church in Philippi. When Paul thinks back about the church, it gives him joy. When Paul thinks about the church, it puts a, a smile on his face. Now, let me ask you, is, is the reason why uh, 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 Paul uh, uh, feels so fondly when he remembers the church in Philippi because everything in, in the city of Philippi went great? No, not even close. When Paul and Silas uh, got to Philippi, uh, they were arrested and thrown in jail. 
but not before they were accosted by the town folk and they were stripped naked and beat with rods. I don't know about you, but if that happened to me at a place, I would not be feeling very fondly about them. There are a lot of people who are free physically, but mentally we're in chains because we hold on to a hurt that someone else has done to us and, and, and we don't let it go. We're shackled by it. We think to ourselves, uh, I, I don't have a father who cares about me or, or, or there's no one in my life who, who loves me or, 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 or I, I lost that job or, or whatever it is that we hold on to so tightly that they become chains that hold us back and defeat us before we even get started. But Paul? Paul chooses to remember the good. Let me take a, a moment here and tell you about my mother. I love my mother. I have an awesome mother. But is my mother perfect? No. My mother burns the biscuits every single time she makes them. And yet I choose to remember the perfect things about my mother. And now guess what? Even the burnt biscuits become special in our relationship. You know what? I hope the same for you. I hope you have the ability to, to remember and see the best of people in your lives. But let me be clear. If you're suffering from domestic violence, I urge you to reach out and get help. Last week, Officer Brianne Leith was killed while responding to a domestic violence call. That call wasn't just for Officer Leith. That call was for all of us. It was a wake-up call for all of us. If you are in that kind of situation, get out and get to a safe place. Get the help and the resources that you need. But on the other hand, if you're just in this merry-go-round of, of frustration and verbal arguments and hurt feelings, I want to challenge you to remember the good. Remember why you fell in love with that person in the first place. Parents, I want to remind you to remember the good. Uh, remember the feeling when you brought home that bundle of joy, right? Before they could uh, 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 walk, uh, before they could talk, and especially before they could talk back. <laughs> Remember the good. And here's the reason why it's important for us to do that. Because God remembers us. It says this in Isaiah 49, 15. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child that she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. I'm thankful that God remembers me and not just my past sin. I'm thankful that God has redeemed my past and given me a newness of life. I told you I was going to give you a, a couple of, of jobs to do, so here's one of those jobs. I want you to take out your phones or your keypads right now, and I want you to type in something that you remember that others have done for you that's good. I'm, I'm going to take the time to do that right now myself. I'm going to type this in here. Hold on for just a second. Bear with me. They bought me cheesecake. <laughs> so what's happened good in your life? Well, here's the second point that I'm making. Remember I said I've only got two. The first one is remember the good. Here's the second. Remember to encourage others. Can you say that with me? Remember to encourage others. It says this in Philippians 1, 4 through 6. Always in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayer with joy, thankful for your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Friends, it's one thing to, to, to remember the good about folks, but it's a, a whole other thing to take the time and the effort to tell them about it. And that's what Paul does. Paul encourages them. Paul calls them partners with him in ministry. Let me ask you a question. What do you think your former pastors think about you 
as Lawrence United Methodist Church. After they leave and they, they look back on their ministry here with you, what do you think they think? Well, I just happened to catch up with two of them. Joe has asked me if I would share with you something of what I think about when I remember Lawrence. I have a lot of memories, a lot of good memories, a lot of times that we spent together in worship and study and doing various events and activities. And I'm thankful for the time that I had to share with you. But the most important thing I remember are you, the people, the experiences we shared and the relationships we built. And it's always a wonderful thing when I have a chance to see any of you and hear from any of you, spend any time together. And I'm thankful for all of the gifts you gave to me by offering me your friendship and your help and just the time that we spent worshiping together, studying together, and learning about Christ together. And it is my hope that you are continuing to learn and grow. In these days, we're going through some strange times, but I think we'll find that the Lord has a lot to teach us. I thank you for all of the different ways that over the time that you have showed me your friendship. And I just think that's the most important gift we can give to anyone. The relationships we share with people are the most important thing in our lives. They have far more value than anything or any activity or anything else is the people that matter. The Apostle Paul knew that as you heard from today's scripture and I think we know that too. But again I thank you for the time we spent together and I just wish you grace and peace every day of your lives and thank you friends from LUMC. It's so good to connect with you, even though we're not able to be together physically, we are together this way. And I'm just so glad to be sharing with you this morning. Pastor Joe asked me to think about what were, what were the years like when Debbie and I and our family were there? Well, I want to say it this way. Uh, I love the old Andy Griffith show. And in one episode, Andy and Opie are having, Opie's having a little difficulty with school. And Andy's kind of being the parent to try to make him do his best. And somehow Opie interprets that, that his dad doesn't really love him. And so he almost says that to Andy. And Andy says, well, you know, Opie, it's hard for me to even think about or say all that you mean to me. Well, I think I would say the same about Lawrence Church. It's hard for me to say all that you mean to me. They were the best years of our lives. Deb and I had such a great time there. Our four children had such a wonderful time in your midst. And uh, we were loved and embraced by you like we had never been loved and embraced by another congregation. And so we think so fondly of you. I think of all those great ministries we did, like Our Place and uh, supporting the preschool, doing youth group. Deb did youth group there for a while, just like Sharon is doing that now. And I think of all the great things that went on there. I think about a highlight for me was uh, us uh, taking the walk and leap of faith to build that beautiful new sanctuary that is your home now. When I think of you, I think of so much. Thank you, Lawrence UMC. Well, church, I want to encourage you. And I want to tell you that I feel just like Pastor Bert and Pastor Paula. I feel like you are the most loving and gracious and willing to serve people that I've ever had the privilege of calling the church. You're wonderful. When, when help is needed, you roll up your sleeves and you put your hands to the plow. When there's a call to give, you, you dig down deep and you give sacrificially. Can you believe that it's been 20 years since I got here? 
I thought about this earlier today. I arrived 20 years ago, a young, thin, black man married to a, a white wife with two mixed babies. And I, I remember uh, someone said to me, now, now not everyone is certain if you might be the right person to represent the church. And then they said specifically, you got to watch out for a man by the name of Gene Vigas. Well, can I tell you something? They were exactly wrong. Exactly wrong. Gene Vigas turned out to be the most wonderful, the, the funniest, encouraging, and sharing man. He's not just a, a, a great parishioner, but he was a great friend to me. I used to mess with Gene Vigas every Sunday at church during the sermon. I, I would pick on him in some way during the sermon. He was the butt of every single one of my jokes, and he took it in stride. Well, one Sunday when Gene Vigas had gotten a little older and a little slower, I was preaching the sermon about time. And I, I had a huge uh, clock uh, uh, up on the, the pulpit. And uh, uh, I did my normal thing in the midst of the sermon. I told my joke about Gene Vigas. And that Sunday, Gene Vigas stood up from the third row. Right then and there, grabbed his walker and started coming forward. I had no idea of what to expect. Well, Gene Vigas comes all the way up and then he gets to that clock and he takes the minute hand and moves it all the way up to the top. And then he turns at me and he says, Joe Johnson, your time is up. Well, the entire church erupts in laughter. Uh, I can't tell you anything else about my sermon that Sunday, and neither can anyone else who was here that Sunday at church. But what we all remember is an older man who took the time to get to know his pastor and to show the love of his church. Well, you know, as I think about that story, I think that it could have gone a different way. We could have gone into the situation thinking, well, you know what? He doesn't like me, and I don't like him. We could go into the situation looking for the worst, and you know what? I think that if we had, we would have found what we were looking for. So I think that's something that's, that's true about us. We find what we're looking for. That's why Paul gives us these instructions. It says in Philippians 4, 8, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. When you encourage someone, you, you fill them with, with, with courage. When you encourage someone, you strengthen them. A mother encourages her child by the way that she talks to them, and they flourish. A father encourages his children by the time he spends with them, and they flourish. A husband and wife, they encourage one another uh, by the love and the honor that, that they give to each other, and they flourish. Imagine what it meant to the early church, that church in Philippi, to be gathered together probably in someone's house, as they read this letter that was sent from Paul the Apostle while he was under house arrest. One person is reading it, and he reads that Paul calls them partners with him in ministry. You are a partner, and your gift matters. You are a partner, and your testimony matters. You are a partner and your, your faithfulness matters. You are a partner and your prayers matter. Well, this letter was so encouraging to that early church. It was so important to them that they held on to this letter. They told it to their children and their children's children. And here we are today. We're gathered in our own homes and we're under house arrest. But I want to encourage you because you and I are partners together in the ministry with Christians around the world. 
both those who are here today and that great cloud of witnesses that have gone on before us. And I want to encourage you and tell you that your gifts matter, that your testimony matters, that your witness matters, that your prayers matter. I want to tell you that, 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 that God will complete the work that he began in you and I in the day of Jesus Christ. I, I got one more assignment for you. Here's what I want you to do tonight. Before you go to bed, I, I want you to pray with the family that's around you. Maybe there's some of you that are, are home alone right now. I want you to pick up the telephone and I want you to call someone and I want you to pray with them. But beyond just praying with them, I want you to thank God for them. And then I want you to say specifically what you thank God for about them. I want it to be a word of encouragement that, 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 that inspires and lifts them up during this time. There was two young men that were traveling house to house and knocking on the doors and inviting people to church. Everything was going great till they got to this one house. The lady wanted nothing to do with it. She said, no, I don't want to go to your church. Get out and stay out. She took the door and she goes to slam the door. But the door, instead of slamming, it flies right back at her. She grabs the door again and she tries to slam it again and it flies right back at her. Well, this time she grabs the door with both uh, hands and she's about to really slam it. Going to put her back into it. But right before she does, one of the young men says, excuse me, ma'am, but before you do that, maybe you should move your cat. Friends, just because a door slams in your face, it does not mean that God is through with you. You're under house arrest. But let me encourage you. God is still working out your best. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. This song simply says, encourage yourself, even in this time. Don't have to be dis depressed or dismayed. You know that God is still in control. Encourage yourself. Speak the word of the Lord and 
Hey, I want to thank you again for worshiping with us today at Lawrence United Methodist Church. And you know what? I, I just made the decision. I just decided something. I'm coming back next week. That's right. I just decided I'm going to come right back here and worship God again. And I hope you make that decision to join us again, too. Please remember, wash your hands and say your prayers because germs and Jesus are everywhere. To God be all the glory, honor, and power now and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go in God's peace.